You're watching the video of the Abacus Pharmacy Plus software. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to show you our product. And uh, without further ado, please let's continue with our video. We begin the prescription fill process by entering the patient's name, last name, comma, first, or just the last name, or comma, first name. We select the patient from the list. The, the, known per, the last known prescriber will be displayed automatically, or you can select one of the last 20 prescribers for this particular patient. We, next, we begin by entering the, uh, the item, the drug that was prescribed, and we select from the list. We enter the quantity prescribed. Notice you will be shown a picture of the medication. We would enter the dispense quantity and the number of refills, authorized refills. You will be given the last known SIG for this drug automatically displayed for you to change and the instructions. If um, if you don't want the the SIGs to automatically appear, you can change this in the configuration preference. We go on to um, the also the um, the patient's default um, insurance will be uh, displayed for you, and that's who. Uh, will be charged for this medication. You can also select from other insurances that the patient is eligible for uh, and were entered in the patient's profile. Okay, from this point you can uh, save the prescription and you will record that one prescription. In the event that the patient has more than one prescription, you may want to bring it down, store it down, and work on the next prescription for the patient. And uh, it's unlimited to the number of prescriptions you can bring down as you're working for that one patient. So let's go ahead and enter the next prescription for the patient. And we'll enter a quantity. We'll enter refills. Notice that uh, in case you're low on inventory you will receive this red screen, a message and also the red screen that would alert you to uh, a low in, uh, inventory situation. In this case you can continue with the same insurance plan or you can change insurance plans. Um, Let's bring it down and store it, store it so we're ready for the next one. Um, we can, let's say we want to change something on the, on the patient information. We can just click on patient. We will be giving the uh, patient information screen for this patient. And uh, it has all the... Uh, information on the patient and as well as the insurances that the patient is eligible for with all the um, card number and uh, person codes, their billing information, there are there's more facility uh, if the patient is in a nursing home ALF. We're going to get into all these screens a little bit, little bit later um, but just so that uh, you're aware that, that there's more information uh, that, that you can store on the patient record. We will continue to uh, process this, these uh, prescriptions. At this point we're just going to save them. You'll be asked to uh, if you want to transmit or print. In this case we're not going to transmit or print. We're just going to continue. Okay, we're going to go back to the patient. 
and notice that I've selected from the list of the last uh, 20 patients to, to see the last 20 patients it's a more convenient way to just select the patient okay I'm just gonna click on it and select the patient and uh, now we can go and look at the patient's history <coughs> which is the last two prescriptions that we created um, from here if you're if you have multiple locations for the pharmacy you can go to a different location and and uh, view the um, the prescriptions dispensed to that patient at those locations or um, or you can modify a prescription simply highlight the prescription that you want to modify it and click modify if you want to make a copy of the prescription so if you're doing a, another prescription uh, using the same information um, as one of the prescriptions you have in the profile you can certainly copy it and make any changes that you need uh, you can print the prescription at this point you can move it to a different patient change refills transfer uh, indicate a transfer in or out of the pharmacy void the prescription in this case you can always recall the any voided prescriptions or patients simply by going into the recycle bin uh, all the prescriptions will be there you can view details more information on the prescription fax uh, a prescription to a doctor uh, or view the actual prescription um, picture uh, that the the doctor wrote so um, this will require a scanner and you would scan the prescriptions every time you enter it into the system um, we will go into these a little bit later but uh, this is a summary of what is in there uh, refills this is on, this is a uh, a partial list of your uh, of the patient's uh, profile. It only shows the all the prescriptions that have remaining refills available. From here, you can select one or many at the time. Simply click, and if you selecting more than one, you would hold the control and click again. So it's the control key and click again and you would if you have uh, 10 you can just control and click all 10 then you press the refill um, and let's see how this works in this case I'm indicated that uh, the refills are early um, do I want to continue I'm just gonna say yes it's gonna present with the first it's gonna do the first refill which is uh, coumadin and it's going to want a lot number and a date uh, that I'm refilling. I'm just going to say yes. It's now doing the next prescription, uh, and it says that it's early for Paxil. I'm just going to say yes. Again, it's asking me for the refill expiration and lot number. I'm just going to click yes. That's fine. It's going to show me the prescriptions that it's refilling, and at this point, I can select the prescription and move them up for me to edit and change any information that I need or I can simply save the prescriptions and they will be refilled we'll go back to the same patient and we'll look at the history and here we are we, we show the prescriptions were refilled for the same day because we we entered the same day we we allowed the, the same day but uh, um, in uh, in your case you would be you would not be doing this you would not be doing an early refill uh, you would see a different date altogether this is just for sample so now let, let's go in and let's say we want to modify one of these Let's do that right now. 
uh, we want to let's say modify this one so we would select it and we press the modify it would be shown to us down and we will bring it up to change that particular record next we want to uh, change the um, item we're not allowed to change this particular record because it's the original and uh, it has already been refilled so we're going to cancel this and go back into the and that was a good exercise to, for you to know that uh, once you've refilled a prescription um, you cannot change the original you must uh, reverse the or void the uh, the the fill the filled prescriptions before you can go back and change the original uh, you know, to to change the original. So here we're going to, to change the first refill, and that we can certainly do of the prescription. And let's say we wanted to. Uh, um, change the uh, quantities. Uh, we didn't fill 30, we filled uh, 20, that was all we had. Okay. And uh, so now we we can go on and save it. Again, we don't want to print or transmit. And we'll go back to the patient. history and there it is okay all right um, copy it's uh, straightforward I'm not going to go into that uh, the print is straightforward it's the prescription label uh, moving into a another patient uh, I think that's straightforward uh, you will learn that as you as you go uh, change refills um, if uh, you run into a situation where you need to uh, enter for the last on the last uh, prescription we, we need to change the number of refills remaining refills or uh, uh, do a DC on it uh, discontinued we can certainly enter a, a DC date here and you can specify a future date and the, uh, the that prescription will DC on that date <coughs> Okay. Um, transfer will transfer the prescription. Basically, what it will do, it will transfer to another pharmacy or from another pharmacy. What it will do is basically remove the remaining uh, refills from the the uh, prescription that you have on file. And uh, if if you noticed. Uh, the prescription numbers uh, have a dash and then a number. The number zero means it's the original. A number one means the first fill and so on. The star, the asterisk, means that uh, there are refills still pending or quantities still pending. And of course in this case we have the one fill of three so you know that there's two of, of a, still available and uh, basically what when you transfer it out to out of the pharmacy what it will do is it will remove that asterisk it will remove the the uh, the um, quantity uh, remaining on the prescription okay when you um, when you do a transfer you can uh, either email the transfer to the pharmacy or you can fax it to them uh, directly and uh, you would enter the required information to do that and click the transfer key okay next you can void prescriptions now when you void a prescription you can always go back to the recycle bin and retrieve the actual prescription and then restore it and uh, so that will give you the opportunity to go back and and, uh, and uh, bring back prescriptions that you've uh, erased 
that's straightforward. Um, details will basically give you more information, show you uh, all the details on the pres particular prescription, um, more information displayed on the screen. And any insurance response, if you were to have uh, transmitted to the insurance, you would also see information of the prescription that you transmitted. Fax, you can uh, fax the uh, to the doctor the, the actual script from here. That's I, as I mentioned, we're not going to get into that. And picture to display the picture. Okay. Next, we're going to look at uh, uh, information regarding the patient. Okay, let's go into the um, um, the patient's demographic information. Uh, you can just it's stored here. A category will specify. Uh, the type of um, you can it, the category will specify a, a custom category you want to place this patient on, and you define your categories. Uh, here you can specify the known allergies for this patient. And a diagnostic, or you can use the uh, the combo box to select the di the diagnosis, and you can specify multiple diagnoses and multiple allergies. You can look up the allergies. By the way, you can look up the allergies by medication name, uh, the base ingredient, or specific group. Next, let's go into insurance. To enter an insurance for this patient, you simply go to the uh, payment plan, enter the uh, the name of the insurance, and select the insurance from the list. Next, you would enter the group, the card relation. And spot and uh, the person code. Okay. Okay. Then we would save it, and it would now appear on the list. There it is. Okay, so once you have it in the list, then you can certainly select it f when you're doing a prescription from the uh, the, the list of prescriptions of of uh, insurances that uh, the patient is has on file. Okay, let's go into billing. Um, here you can specify a different billing address and shipping address. If you are um, sending statements to the patients or uh, shipping uh, medication to the patients, you can you can set up the AR accounts uh, accounts receivables, and it will track the balance of the uh, uh, patient automatically. You can set credit limits. Um, notice that you have the last. Uh, a date for the last time the the patient has uh, been dispensed at the uh, at the pharmacy, and the uh, last uh, known amount that they paid. There's a portion for credit card information if you want to keep that, and uh, facilities. Facilities here you can specify a facility the patient is in. We will 
just enter the name of the facility. You will be brought a list. We will select it from the list, the facility that the patient is in. You can specify a room number, first floor, west wing, bed 203. Now you can use any combinations that you uh, you like to keep track of. This is the, just the most popular one. Uh, the floor, the uh, location, west wing, or north wing, or east, or um, you can also, or south, you can use the, the room number next as just a, a good reference. Uh, the primary physician, you can enter this. Uh, this will be printed on the um, med sheets. can just enter a physician name. Uh, in this case I just pressed uh, G and it will be giving me a list of all the uh, physicians with G, uh, I mean H. I just select the physician and the same for the alternate. Again it will be printed on the med sheet. Um, you can optionally select a, a physician. Okay, the date the patient was admitted to the uh, facility, uh, you can also, you can enter that one as well, or you can select it by pressing the, uh, the, the combo down, uh, you can select it from the calendar. And uh, at this point, uh, let's see what else, uh, we can go into vitals, and uh, if the patient was deceased, you can enter a date here. Um, or other statistics such as weight. You can track uh, weight or height uh, information here, vitals, uh, whether they're a smoker or, or pregnant. Um, if you want the pharmacist uh, to be alerted um, uh, on a specific patient when the uh, patient has been uh, selected, you can uh, select yes here and once that patient is selected, uh, you will receive a message to alert the pharmacist. Um, HICFA. This is for uh, to fill out the HICFA form or to uh, uh, to to send uh, prescriptions, um, uh, DME prescriptions, uh, electronically, and uh, you would need to fill out this information. Or do that, which is part of the uh, uh, HICFA form requirements. Notes. Here you can enter an unlimited number of notes for the uh, uh, patient. This will be kept in the patient record. And you can be reminded of this uh, particular message on a given date. So you can, you can write a note and, and then ask to be reminded uh, a month from now, whenever. whatever. You can write a date and a reminder date and then save it by pressing the key here. Okay, that's it for the patient. We will save it. Next we will look at the prescriber and uh, this is just uh, the information you will keep on the prescriber same as with the patient. Notice that at the bottom you would you have various options. One is to find uh, new, uh, if one is to find a prescri uh, prescriber or if you want to create a brand new prescriber, remove the prescriber, save the changes you've made, cancel, or just select this prescriber for the, for the prescription.
Okay, let's go into item. Take a look at what uh, what we can do there. Okay, when you go to item, um, you would uh, see the information on the on the particular drug. Um, here you can change the price information, the AWP price, uh, or you can enter other pricing such as competitive pricing, retail price, or your cost. You can also uh, have the distributor uh, give you the uh, your cost by diskette, uh, CD, or, uh, via the internet, uh, and uh, the program will upload it to the, the database. It will save your cost in here. Also notice that uh, your every time the AWP changes, you will be giving a list of the uh, the changes that occurred at what date and who did it. You can uh, set inventory values. Um, the inventory can. Uh, um, you can can be uh, monitored by the system and reduced, or you can uh, tell the system not to reduce your inventory. You can be asked to be alerted when uh, an inventory uh, uh, the item becomes uh, goes below the minimum inventory value, um, and uh, then uh, you can have the system replenish or. Uh, tell you how many to order to get the item back to its maximum inventory level uh, that you would specify. For example, you want to keep a minimum inventory of 200 of these and you, uh, you want to uh, bring your inventory if it goes down to 200 to a maximum of 1000. Uh, the drug expires is as of you receive the merchandise, you will enter expiration dates for those merchandise that you received. The system will track the expiration dates for all the, the medications that you have on stock and lot numbers. If you're mixing uh, ingredients, if this is a, a, uh, uh, a compound or uh, uh, you need to if you need to specify a um, a number of days that the that this particular item will expire once it's mixed um, instead of a drug expire date you would enter a number of days say 15 days after mixing then the expiration date upon filling the prescription will be set to 15 days later You can select the most uh, the supplier, the main supplier for this medication, uh, the order uh, code for the supplier, last date that it was sold, uh, the number of of uh, units sold to date, and um, we can always get a history of the the sales in this particular case there was none and and a summary none manufacturer this is the manufacturer of and you can uh, change it if you need to uh, the category and the class will be set automatically for you uh, this is nothing that you need to be concerned with this is something that's coming from uh, our database uh, counseling, this is the monograph information and uh, you can view the monograph in the three languages and it will be displayed to you on the screen if it's available. The uh, uh, drug, you can enter multi unlimited notes for a particular drug and um, uh, you can uh, have the, the system display this at any point. Here we just want to 
save it and next we'll look at the SIG the SIG you would enter the uh, instructions for the SIG for the SIG entered in English Spanish or French the quantity per dose and doses per day this allows the day supplies to be calculated for you so um, it's it's very important to to set this uh, in the right uh, the right number so that it can calculate the number the day supply once the SIG is selected plan in the plan uh, file you can uh, enter uh, not only the uh, plan information and basically to to set a plan for transmissions all you would need is the description of the plan the plan code the uh, P the PCN number and the bin number all the uh, other information is optional you can enter comments if you want for the plan or special instructions that you want displayed once you select the I the the plan um, uh, such as special billing instructions um, you can select the table that will be used to calculate the price for this particular uh, insurance or or plan. Uh, it could be a cash plan, accounts receivable plan. Um, you can uh, you can select the dispensing fee um, or a a tax if you like or a copayment. Okay. In the communication side, the most standard, uh, the the most used would be the software certification. Some insurance companies will want you to, to enter the uh, the certification for that vendor, and uh, we would indicate later where you can get all those numbers uh, as reference. Here in the cards, what you would have here is uh, you can scan in um, the actual uh, insurance cards with your comments, and uh, you can view this uh, at the point of, of uh, uh, dispensing for a particular insurance to know what uh, group number, uh, card number, or how to uh, best... Uh, 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 read the uh, the plan uh, uh, requirements or anything else that you want to scan okay the origin the this is the where you got the uh, prescription whether it was written or telephoned in um, or received electronically via the uh, internet. Uh, these are options if you've uh, decided to go with uh, 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 with a, a product to uh, get prescriptions via the internet. Uh, you will have it as an electronic, or whether it was faxed in from the patient by the patient or the doctor. Uh, this is the disposition, whether it will be picked up or. Uh, delivered or mailed. HOA hours of administration. If the patient is in a facility, you will be asked to enter the um, uh, facility times. Uh, now this is also uh, kept in the facility record. So if you go to that facility, and we can get there by several ways, but more convenient will be to go to the patient, go to the facility, and then go in the facility, press the uh, that icon, and then here we can see that the default administration times um, we can we can select one of the one of them as a default uh, HOAs, save it, and 
and here we are we have it displayed on the screen okay so um, some more on the patient uh, uh, or uh, prescription fill screen is that we can if we need to um, enter a RX number override it we can just click on that and we can enter the the RX number we want created for this prescription um, okay save it okay now uh, let's let's enter a patient another way we can say comma James and as you see all the James will appear we can hit the enter key instead of selecting one and then you will be presented with a screen with more James because that more than we can fit on the, the other screen and uh, here we can certainly go down and select the, the James that, that you need to select and click on that okay from here we can if you notice this is the patient information it will show you the age uh, what's on red what's in red here it will be uh, things that you be uh, that you need to look into and one of them is allergies and you can click on that and it will take you to the patient screen where you can see the allergies um, let's see what else scanning the prescription if you have a scanner um, once you do a prescription you would click this and once you set it it will remain uh, set and it will ask you to enter the prescription every single time if you're doing an OTC uh, medication you don't need to use the fill screen you can just go to OTC and uh, enter in the item uh, okay select the item in case there was an OTC select the item and uh, and just hit the save button and uh, that's it that's how you do an OTC if it, this was a DME you would if this was a DME you would enter the uh, item first you will click on DME Okay, if this was a DME, you would simply enter the prescription information, press DME, and then continue to enter the uh, CPT codes or select them from the list and modifier.
and you would simply hit save. Okay, the clear all would uh, clear the last prescription that you entered, void it. The implode and explode or expand would um, give you the the screen where you can enter multiple prescriptions. If you don't like that feature, you can just simply take it off and uh, it will make the prescription fill a look a lot simpler. Um, however, an advanced user would like to have that feature. Okay. Next we'll talk about orders, order entry. Something else you can do outside of prescription fill is just entering orders and you could uh, enter in an order for a particular patient item we'll use the same one quantity refills sig okay and we'll just save this okay now what we'll do is let's let's pretend you can have one person entering orders just entering prescriptions as they come in um, then what you would do is you would scan each prescription when the pharmacist would then go to the fill screen and uh, there will be an option in the configuration which uh, basically says display uh, display the pending orders on the pending RX screen okay save that and or you would go to show orders pending and the pharmacist will see a screen like this similar to this uh, basically would we'll have the orders that was just done he would select it as one that he wants filled he can also go to full screen and look at more details if he needs to okay to fill this order you would select the fill the order will be passed from here from that place to here and then he would uh, look at the actual the actual prescription that would the doctor wrote will be displayed on this side of the screen and uh, he will look at the prescription and and then make sure that everything is correct if everything is correct he would uh, go on and, and process it and that's what the orders is used for Okay, and uh, next we will go into reports. The reports menu you can select uh, a report from or a, a type of report from the, the first um, location which is if you want to look at prescriptions or if you're dealing with nursing homes inventory or just the files that you want to print out. In this particular case, let's say we want to do a nursing home med sheets. We go down to nursing home. Okay, the first thing that is displayed will be the med sheets. You can certainly do other other reports, but you would select med sheets. And uh, from here, you can either display it or print it, send it to the printer. You will be asked for certain criteria, and then uh, you can go ahead and process it. Let's go ahead and do one for the daily prescription log we'll put it on the screen see how it looks okay here's our criteria that we can uh, enter or change and press OK here's our report on what we did today and uh, this is these are the two reports that get uh, created as you do reports they're stored down here so you can go back and reference them here's a summary 
So we look at the summary and we can look at the detail. Again, if you have multiple locations, you can do this report from any location that you have available. Okay, now for reports. Okay, um, logging in and logging out, um, you can have users different uh, requirements, different login requirements, um, uh, different security levels and uh, simply they would select their um, username and, and click uh, the OK. You can set the, secu the security sign-on screens to have a pharmacist and a tech sign-on or just one user log on or no user to log on. Thank you for watching our videos and we hope you tune in for other products uh, coming your way in the near future.